How's it going, everyone out there in the universe? Welcome to Tech Talk Live. This is our uh, second event where we're doing a uh, live conversation discussion, uh, very similar to all the rest of our Tech Talks, though. We're, uh, we're bringing you uh, discussions and uh, some education on some of the different topics in the, uh, in the industry. So today, uh, obviously, we have Brian and myself, the bearded duo from Connect Us. And uh, we're joined by Travis Doric from Peplink, who is the Peplink brand master uh, and just uh, is going to drop a ton of knowledge for us. So, um, uh, Travis, I'll let you do a, a quick small introduction and then uh, we can kind of jump into some of the fun topics that we want to discuss today about Peplink. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I forgot my beard, but happy to be here nonetheless. I'm Travis Durick. I'm a product manager here at Peplink. And I don't know, I've been with the company like not quite 15 years, but pretty darn close. So been through a couple G's now and yeah, excited to be here and talk to you folks about Peplink. Awesome. Yeah, welcome. And uh, welcome, thank you for joining us. So, uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's just jump right into it because I know, uh, you know, we have a lot of discussions over the connect side of what we, um, you know, when it comes to manufacturers and different products and services and, uh, we think very highly of Peplink, and there is just some really amazing solutions you guys provide. And so, uh, if you can give us a little bit of background on uh, on Peplink, and uh, maybe uh, an advantage or two right out of the gate. Yeah. So, you know, Peplink. I think a lot of people see it's a cellular router, right? We make routers that have 4G, 5G built in, and that's great. There's lots of companies that do that, but. Um, the big difference with Peplink is we have a different technology called Speed Fusion, and that's some software that goes on top of that um, 4G, 5G router. And that's really something designed to help make your connection better. It goes beyond what the capabilities of a tr traditional cellular router can do, and so it really puts us into a whole other class of solution because um, that word solution, it really solves problems that a lot of people have out there. Yeah, it, it really does. I uh, I know just being in the industry for 20 plus years, um, it's it's been not only interesting from that perspective, but how consistent Peplink has been over the years, right? I can, I can go back to the 3G time period where I remember one of the, my data counterparts coming to me and saying, dude, there's this company out there called Peplink. And literally, like, if you disconnect your primary connection, uh, like it's just it's just, you don't even lose packets it's crazy how awesome this connectivity is right and so all the way to now where there's just multiple wans connecting and and all of that but um but yeah it's it's pretty darn cool from that standpoint um so let's discuss a little bit more about uh i'm sorry uh you were gonna you were gonna say something there but i was gonna say let's get into bonding and, and uh speed yeah speed more. i mean in, i think we're both going to the same place here and you know that's that's the thing that we kept you know we've had this speed fusion technology for quite a few years and you know every time at when 3g went to 4g and when 4g went to 5g the question we always get is okay now there's 4g now there's 5g am i going to need speed fusion anymore and you know, over and over again, the answer has always been yes, because no matter who you are in the business world, especially one connection just isn't going to be reliable enough day to day, 24-7, 365. And it's not a knock on any one connection or a technology, but again, the, the demands of a business are just greater than what any single link is able to do often. And so Speed Fusion is that insurance or that protection that you're not going to have those outages and those interruptions. Nice. Yeah. So, go ahead, Ryan. I had some questions, but yeah, no, I uh, I think you're you're going to the same place I'm at, Brian. Uh, probably, but regarding applications and and kind of when the rubber hits the road, I'm presuming. Yeah. Oh. So, well, I had one question set, but I think I'll take a step back. Like. What is like what what actually is this the, the the speed fusion with the bonding particularly like how does that work you know so we okay, got so, over we got the bonding but how what is that yeah so speed fusion like I said it's a, it's a software technology that we add to the routers and so it lets you take multiple connections that could be a a 5G fixed wireless, and it could be, you know, a cable modem landline or really any combination, right? You can have 5G and Starlink if you want. There's really no 
um, limitation to the number of links or combinations of links you can put together, but um, lots of routers can do that, right? You can plug in different links and you can switch from one to the other, but what they don't do is they don't hand that connection off. When you switch from your fixed wireless to your Starlink, you know, your Zoom, your Teams, those types of applications are gonna break. They're gonna interrupt, they're gonna disconnect. You're gonna fail over, keyword fail, right? Your, your applications all fail and then they switch over. And so it's a cold experience, right? You get dropped, you go dark, and then you can reconnect pretty quickly, right? It's automatic, but with Speed Fusion, we make that seamless so that you basically don't even drop packets. Your, your video stays up, your audio stays up, you probably don't even know that you lost your primary connection. So, um, you know, just about anybody can understand that when they've had downtime, even if it's a handful of minutes, it can feel like an eternity. And so it might sound trivial, trivial at first, but yeah, when you're, when you've got 50 people in your restaurant and you're trying to swipe credit cards during lunch rush, you know, your credit card machine goes down for three minutes. You just lost 20 customers at least, right? You're going to have people just walking out that door if that line stops moving. So, you know, being able to swipe that credit card, have your landline go down right in the middle of that transaction and it doesn't actually interrupt the transaction, that's really what Speed Fusion can do. It's, it's that absolute continuity for, for business applications. The, Thank uh, you. Yeah, so you don't get that awkward stare from your customers while you're trying to, uh, to take, oh, their, take uh, their money, right? Yeah, I'm sorry your card didn't work. Um, yeah. Okay, all right. How about this then? For the bonding aspect of it, what are like what are some of the most extreme examples? Like yeah. the most ridiculous stuff out there. Like, I know you've got to have some. Like what 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 throw them at me? Like crazy, sure. crazy examples. Of 15 years of experience, right? Yeah, and that, that's what's so fun about this is like, you know, we can there's examples on both sides, right? There's the the day-to-day -day credit card processing and, you know, voice calls. Like that makes sense to everybody, but you can take this so much further than that too. And so if we look at like autonomous systems, we've got customers implementing autonomous vehicles in the air and the ground, on the sea, all over the place. So they're using Speed Fusion to put those multiple connections together so that they can have those autonomous systems safely out there and use all these different networks. And so they're they're smashing together every network possible, right? They're bringing, you know, Verizon, AT and T, T Mobile, roaming carriers, Starlink, right? Some of the, these systems need everything, right? They need absolute guarantee, basically, or as close to a guarantee as they can get, that those applications are going to keep working no matter where they go and how you know, loaded one network or another network is. And so, again, you need that seamless ability to switch packets and move things from one connection to another and also add all that bandwidth up with the bonding. And so that's one example. Um, another example we see is um, like cruise ship operators. We've got cruise ship operators that, you know, they've been trying to do Wi-Fi at sea for a long time and they've been doing it to some degree, um, but it wouldn't, necessarily qualify as like office grade internet experience where you could go out to see and actually get your work done and do calls like this and you know have a productive work experience right you might be able to get a few emails here and there but um, now they're taking the peplink devices and we've got high-end devices that can put a whole bunch of connections together and so they're bonding you know as many 5g connections as they can get so that when they're near shore they've got all that really fast, high-speed 5G connectivity, but then they're also bonding a whole bunch of Starlink dishes. And we're talking like 10 or more Starlink dishes together. So they're able to transition from that bonded 5G to the bonded Starlink as they come in and out of port and you know it further near, near or further from shore. And so again, that's a completely seamless experience. We're like this like connection manager on steroids where we're able to take all these connections, make sense of them, follow kind of bandwidth usage rules so we're not running huge overages. And oh, by the way, make all the applications work really well too when you move in and out of those different coverage areas. And so it gets I complicated. I really used that we, last March. We're, what's that? Our family went on, yeah, our family went on a cruise. I, I'm not gonna name a line. Uh-huh. Well, the, our daughters really wanted to go on and yep. bought the Wi-Fi package and like might as well have not had it. It was. I shouldn't laugh, but yeah, it's unfortunate, right? Like, yeah. 
often the experience. And, and so, yeah, that's, you know, there's cruise lines now that are able to do much better than that. And so that was, that was technology that Speed Fusion was ready for. And, you know, it was something we already had. Again, it's just bring the connections you've got and we can, we can make them, we can make them work together in a better, faster, more reliable way. Yeah, I, th I think that opened my eyes when we were uh, down in um, Florida in May and uh, and we were able to look out in the parking lot and see 15 Starlink satellites and know that there was three cell carriers and a fiber connection all coming in and providing Wi-Fi for our event and, uh, and you know, and giving consistent great speeds great to speeds everyone there. at the event. I was, that, I, was that kind of blew me away. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. That was definitely... I, I knew a little bit. I didn't realize it was to that degree. Like we talk about cruise ships where they can line up, you know, 15 satellite dishes and, uh, you know, and be in the harbor and then use whatever connectivity they're leveraging there as well. I think it's one of the, the most simplistic and unique things I've learned about PepLink is just a WAN is just another, and it doesn't matter which WAN it is, it's just another connection that it can leverage and use. Uh, to build that, you know, that performance and that reliability within the connectivity. Um, and that's just super cool. Super it's cool. so different from anything else out there. And, uh, yeah, it's yeah. just so unique, as you mentioned, about no packet drops at all. And in some cases, okay. customers don't even know they lost connectivity. Um, yeah, and connectivity. I think it, the other part that I haven't really touched on yet is, you know, I've a little bit, but, you know, we've got a broad range of hardware devices. And so, you know, we've got you know, devices that are just a couple hundred dollars and we've got devices that are like, you know, closer to $30,000 and the whole spectrum in between. And the cool thing is they all do the same thing. They all have speed fusion. They all have that ability to protect those applications. And so it's, it's you know, just about anybody needs this technology, right? And so previously only the biggest enterprises could afford something like this, right? It was something not really accessible to the general business market or even the consumer market, but um, that's where we do it differently, right? We make this affordable too. You know, at the end of the day, somebody has to pay for this. And so we've really sure. opened up that capability to just about anybody who's already purchasing data connectivity today. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So, so you've been doing this for a while, right? Is mm -hmm. there is there some element of speed fusion that you feel is not as well understood by the, by everyone that that you would like better understood or, or misunderstandings that you come across a lot knowledge gaps yeah i think i think one of the biggest ones is we've probably done it to ourselves but the name speed fusion right everybody looks at this and goes okay i want to take one plus one and get two right you know, or 100 plus 100 and get 200. And that sometimes that is what you need, right? Sometimes if you're doing large file transfers, if you're backing up virtual machines or, you know, backing up video storage or, you know, uploading video content that's not live, yeah, you need that raw speed, right? And Speed Fusion can do that for sure, right? We can take that one plus one and it maybe won't equal two, but it'll get you to like 1.8 or something like that. But Day to day, that's not really what most people need. They need consistency, right? They need their video calls to just be buttery smooth and crystal clear. And that's, you really only need a megabit or two for that. But so many of these links are, are not guaranteed. They're variable, right? And it's, again, it's not a knock on the links. It's how the technology works. We all have to share the airwaves. We all have to share some of this bandwidth in certain cases. And so, you know, they burst the, the connection. So your speeds are gonna go up, down, up, down. And that's where you start to see the video quality start to flutter in the middle of calls and stuff. And so speed fusion often is more so used to just protect those so that you get that consistent one megabit per second or that consistent two megabits, whatever the number is that you need to hit. It's oftentimes more about consistency than it is about the speed part of the fusion. That's that smooth, the WAN smoothing. Yeah, so WAN smoothing, um, forward air correction, being able to overcome packet loss, being able to overcome changes in latency so that, again, those applications don't experience those up downs, they just get that nice steady smooth. Yeah, I, I think it, get, it, it gets lost in marketing because, right, everything's about the speed, right? 
You, you yep. go to speed test. I mean, how many people go to speed test? And they don't even know what the late numbers, numbers mean. mean. They're like, I don't know, MS something. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think it always comes down to download, upload speeds, and that's kind of the way. Unfortunately, the industry has kind of you know you have a good connection if you have you know 500 meg down yep. or uh, 30 meg up or whatever. Um, yep. you know, not looking at the fact that you might be at 300 milliseconds and you couldn't even hold a call. You know. Yeah. They see the needle get buried and they go, wow, that's yeah. cool. That's what I want, yeah. right? And, yep. Yeah, I want more of that. So mm -hmm. I, always, I always try to use analogies sometimes with, uh, I like to use an analogy of a Ferrari and a dump truck, right? They are yep. both, you know, awesome, awesome vehicles, but depending on what you're trying to accomplish, you know, if you're trying to take a lot of something and hold it somewhere, that Ferrari is not going to be very helpful. It's gonna get somewhere yep. fast for you, but unfortunately, if you're hauling data or hauling whatever, that dump truck's going to be the better vehicle for that. And so, uh, so yeah. often, I think people don't really understand that sometimes when uh, when they're looking at the connectivity, they're just thinking speed, speed, speed. Yeah, if you've ever driven in a race car, you don't want to put a Ferrari on a really bumpy road, right? That's not going to yeah. be a good experience. <laughs> you need the right vehicle for the right conditions. And That's awesome. That's yeah, I like that too. I'm still on that, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A good deal. That's cool. Nice. That's all so, the questions I had. Well, I, I wanted to drive into one last, I think, while we uh, we have a few minutes left um, and, uh, and chat a little bit about the products, right? Because one of the other things I think that gets often lost with Speed Fusion is uh, folks see dual SIM card in the device. And they believe, yeah. oh, I can take two SIM cards, I can drop it in, and I can, I can, you know, you know, go to town, whether it's you know multi-carrier or the same carrier or whatever. But uh, I do know enough to say, you know, there's there's devices that are out there that have one radio and two SIMs, and then two radios and two SIMs. If you want to speak a little bit more to what you can leverage with multi-carriers uh, with one of those versus the other, yeah, yeah, that's a great point because it, it's understandably so pretty easy to get lost in the nuances of these technologies and these you know hardware devices because you put two sims into a device and yeah you think i can just you know use both of them at the same time and um the number of sims is one part of it but the number of radios is the other part and so if you look at two of our popular products the br1 pro 5g and then the br2 pro 5g one of them has one radio the other one has two radios so that's two 5G radios or one 5G radio. And so with that BR1 Pro 5G, there's SIM cards. There's an A and a B. And then there's an Ethernet WAN and there's a Wi-Fi WAN. So with the BR1 Pro, you can bond the Wi-Fi WAN, the Ethernet WAN, and that 5G WAN together and get that speed, redundancy, all those benefits we've talked about. But if you want to switch from SIM A to SIM B, that will interrupt that 5G connection as it switches that. It's one radio and it has to disconnect that one and switch over to the other one. Now, if you've got that landline there, Speed Fusion will protect you so that you don't experience that drop. But again, you're only able to use one 5G connection at a time in that case, where the BR2 Pro 5G has two radios, you can actively bond both of those 5G connections at the same time. So that lets you go much more you know, pure wireless, right? You can have two wireless connections, you can back them up. So as they sit there and kind of bobble back and forth with latency and speeds, you can fuse those together and have that, again, that consistent experience, even just using pure wireless connections. But yeah, it's that number of radios, not the number of SIM cards that really lets you do those actively together. That active active meets that BR2, the two radio configuration. Gotcha. Can you take two BR1 pros and connect them together? Yeah, and so that, that I love that question because that's a new capability we added last year. It's called our synergy mode and so Basically, you can virtualize one device inside of another one. So you could take a BR1 Pro 5G and another BR1 Pro 5G, plug one into the other, and then that, that master one will display the, the, the 5G interface, the Ethernet interface, the Wi-Fi interface from that other one that's connected to it. Okay. So then you basically get that same BR2 Pro experience, but you can do kind of unique things like put one of them closer to maybe where your Wi-Fi WAN connection is and the other one closer to where your users are. So you can start separating the access points and the WAN capabilities. So, you know, you can get creative really quickly with that capability of being able to kind of absorb those other devices virtually into there. So you've got one bigger router that has the connections of 
of all of them combined. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, man, the creativity is, I just feel like, unlimited. Um, and uh, we'll have to have you back on and chat about sim injectors and all other crazy yeah. things. Because, I, I mean, I've never, I, again, 22 years in the industry, and I can say it's only been the last 12 to 14 months I've even started to understand and the craziness with multiple SIM cards and, and just, you know, just you know, device device device. Out multiple SIM cards. Um, it's pretty incredible. So, uh, yeah. And I think, you know, the creativity part, really the credit goes to our customers because just so many of the features in our product is driven directly by a customer taking our technology way further than we ever expected it and doing, you know, unique things that again, we just didn't see coming. And so, you know, synergy mode is one example of that, but there's tons of those. And so, yeah, it's fun to be able to put something out there and see what people are able to build with it and how they're able to, to use that to solve problems that, again, we just didn't know existed necessarily, but it's that same technology in speed fusion that's letting people have that creativity to, to solve those big problems. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is yeah. really cool. You, you set out to create a technology and what you've ended up is you've, you've created a canvas. Yeah, yeah, totally. Template. Yep. Build whatever, build whatever you need with it, right? And yeah, a canvas is a good way to say that because it's just the starting point for, for people that have that creativity and those unique needs. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I am, uh, again, I'm certain we're going to have more of these conversations because there just really is a endless uh, amount of opportunities that, that we're seeing and, uh, and creating and help designing with, uh, with some of our customers. So thank you so much, Travis, for joining us today. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, awesome uh, letting us learn a lot more. Yeah, that is awesome. What's going on. And uh, as, as always, for everyone else out there, continue to tune in and check out our social media pages, LinkedIn, YouTube, all that good stuff as we'll continue uh, putting more content out there and all that awesomeness. So thanks again and uh, have an amazing day. Stay thanks, metal. Man.